We ballin' like it's March Madness. I'm the one that's living lavish, like I'm playing for the Mavericks. Hey, man, that's their future, man. What's up with y'all boys and girls, man? Hey, it's Jay Briggs here from PickDogs.com, bringing y'all my NBA Jam session on March 1st, 2023, man. New month, new goals, new opportunities, man. Month of March is here. I'm ready to smash it, man. This is one of my favorite months. We got college basketball uh, tournament starting this month. We got NBA season winding down this month. It's a great money-making month, man. I'm ready to smash it, per usual, man. If you're looking for my best bets and more of this great content, y'all know what to do, man. Smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, and drop your like down in the comments. Uh, my best bets can be found over at PickDogs Premium. Just click that link in the description. It takes you right to my handicapper page. That's where you can find my long-term packages, uh, all my bets for today's action, and my $15 NBA Jam Session play today. We hit the play of the month yesterday with the Memphis Grizzlies. Love to see that. We have not missed a play of the month in the NBA season, man. So we love to see that. We're trying to keep that rolling uh, through the entire NBA season. We've hit three of our last four on the uh, $15 NBA Jam Session play. So you can scoop that up today. I love tonight's play as well. Um, we got a nice size card. Nine games. You know what we're going to do, man. You can also follow me on Twitter at ParlayGuyJays. That's where I update y'all on late injury news. Let y'all know if my mind changes due to late information coming out of the association, man. Same thing for the live show that I now have at 3 p.m. Uh, Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. You can check us out there. Uh, I'll have a guest today. Not sure who's going to be yet, uh, but I will have one today. So check me out there, man. Nice card today. Start of March, man. Let's begin on a high note. And uh, without further ado, let's hop right into tonight's NBA action. In our first matchup of the day, man, we got the Phoenix Suns out on the road facing the Charlotte Hornets, man. It's the debut game for Easy Money Sniper, for Durantula, man, for KD. D, the seven foot assassin, man. Oh my, it's gonna be ugly, man. The question is, game one, are we ready to lay ten and a half with the Suns on the road? That's the real question, man. We know the Suns team is the favorite to win the West, probably the favorites to win the finals, and for very good reason. This is a Suns team that was hooping without Kevin Durant. They were the number one seed last year. Now you add a generational talent, a top five score all time to the Phoenix Suns, man, this is going to be disgusting. And I'm a Maverick fan. I hate the Suns. And this is going to be absolutely disgusting. In that same breath, though, man, I'm going contrarian, man. I know no LaMelo Ball tonight, bro. I know it. So don't get to spamming that in the comments. No LaMelo Ball. I know he broke his ankle in his last one. Really unfortunate for a Hornets team that's been playing really good basketball, man. They've won five straight games. They've played four of their last five on their home floor. So this is going to be their fifth home game in their last six games. I still think even without LaMelo, they can keep this one within 10 and a half. This is an inflated line due to Kevin Durant. I wholeheartedly believe everybody, their mama, uncle, granny, and little cousin is going to be on the Phoenix Suns, man. Me personally, I think I'm just going to hold my nose and take the Charlotte Hornets and uh, see what happens. I'm just being truthful with y'all. I'm shooting a thousand. Uh, the Suns, man, they're going to be dominant. They're the favorites to win the finals, the favorites to win the West, all that, man. And it's going to be nasty, bro. But game one, first game with Kevin Durant on the road, I don't know, man. The Suns, though, I will say this. They did hammer Charlotte already once this season, 128-97 on the 24th of January, so not that long ago, man, and that game was in Charlotte, no, that game was in Phoenix, my bad, that game was in Phoenix, so we're in Charlotte in this one, man, I really like what I've seen from Charlotte, I know LaMelo's gone, but if I'm being a thousand, man, I still think the Hornets have just enough to cover, man, I'm, I think we're looking at an eight, nine point win for the Phoenix Suns in this one. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got your Chicago Bulls out on the road facing the Detroit Pistons. Chicago laying six, total 224 and a half. Oh, uh, man, I, I've been saying coming out of the break, man, I was looking to face Chicago at most turns, man, but they came out of the break hooping, man. You got to call a spade a spade. Uh, they hammered Brooklyn first game out. I mean, hammered them, man. Took them absolutely behind the shed. 131-87 was the score in that one. They beat up on Washington, too, man, on their home floor, 102 82, so a 20-point win in that one. They did just lose last night, though, uh, to the Toronto Raptors out on the road, 104-98. I do believe that line was six, so it'll push for most people. Uh, so, But still, a fairly competitive effort for the Bulls out on the road. Uh, they're on the road back-to-back. -back. They're facing the Pistons in this one. 
If I'm going to be honest, do I feel like laying six with the Bulls on the road? I do not. So, in turn, uh, I do lean Pistons plus the points. I want to see if my guy Bojan Bogdanovic plays tonight, though. Uh, he's a huge piece in this. He is listed as probable with an Achilles in injury. He sat out last game, so I do expect him to probably play today. And... Um, Isaiah Livers looks like he's probable day to day as well. Actually, he's doubtful. Isaiah Stewart looks like he's going to be out. And Jalen Duran for the Pistons it looks like he's going to be out as well. But this Pistons group is still a really scrappy group, man. Uh, they've been scrappy coming out of the break. Um, lost by two to Orlando. Uh, covered in that one. Lost by four to Toronto. Covered in that one. And they did get beat pretty handily by Charlotte in their last game, man. 117-106. But... I do think uh, they can keep this game competitive on their home floor against the most inconsistent team in the NBA, which I've said for majority of the season, in the Chicago Bulls. The Pistons also working with double revenge as the Bulls uh, did win the first two meetings this season pretty comfortably. The last one, 126-108 on the 19th of January in Detroit and 132-118 on the 30th of uh, December in Chicago. This one, though... I, I just think that the Pistons can keep this one competitive. Chicago messes around and wins it, but it's probably going to be late. It's probably going to be a DeMar DeRozan game winner. We haven't seen one in quite some time. We know he has one in the tuck, uh, and that's probably what it's going to take to beat this uh, Pistons team on the road. I'm going to grab the points here. want to see if my guy Bojan plays. He's a huge addition to this Pistons team, but uh, I like the Pistons plus a six here in this matchup. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got a really good game, man. I'm excited to watch this one tonight. It's probably the game of the day. Uh, let me see. Yeah, this is the game of the day, in my opinion. Philly and Miami is going to be a good one, but I don't think it compares to this one. This one could mess around and be the Eastern Conference Finals. Very well could be. Um, and we got the Cleveland Cavaliers out on the road facing the Boston Celtics, the best record team in the NBA. Uh, Celtics laying 5.5, total 221. I'm going to be honest with y'all in this one, man. It's a really, really tough game for me, man. Uh, the Celtics, I'll tell you all the time, I think they're the best team in basketball right now. They have the best record in basketball, and uh, they're balling. I know they lost their last game uh, to the New York Knicks, 109-94. Uh, before that, though, they had ripped off three straight, including a win on the road against Philadelphia. They did just play four of the last five out on the road, man, so... This is their first home game back. This could be a flat spot. But in that same breath, man, do we really want to fade Boston on their home floor? Like, sometimes we just got to ask ourselves that question. Is fading Boston on their home floor a spot I really want to be? And no, it's not. Um, even though if I'm going to be a 1,000%, man, I do lean Cleveland. And the only reason I really lean Cleveland is it's five and a half. I think this line should be more like three, four um, as – I think this is a 50-50 type game. I can make the argument that Cleveland could go in here, play really good defense like we know they can, and win this basketball game. I do have some concerns with Cleveland on the road. They're not the same juggernaut out there as they are on their home floor. We know Cleveland at home goes stupid dummy crazy, same way as Boston. But um, still, Cleveland could very well go into Boston and win this basketball game. Let's not confuse ourselves, man. Uh they have Donovan Mitchell who can go nuclear on the scoring. I love their defensive end with Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. They actually match up pretty well with this Celtics team, man. The Celtics looks like they are getting JB back tonight, though. He did not play in their last one against the Knicks, which should be a boost. I'm excited to watch this game, man. Nine times out of ten, I'm probably not going to bet it. Like I said, I can make the argument for both sides. I do lean Cleveland plus the five and a half, as I do think the line should probably be a little closer to like three or four. For the Celtics, I do think the Celtics win this basketball game late on their home floor, but I could see it being a really close game, wire to wire, and Cleveland barely getting that backdoor cover or um, Cleveland losing this game by five points. So I do lean that direction, but it's a really tight one. It's going to be a really good game, and I can't wait to watch it. In our next matchup of the night, man, I've been waiting on this spot, man. Y'all already know where we're going in this one. We got Philly Lang 2 on the road in Miami, man. Total 215 and a half. I know Miami just went into Philadelphia two days ago and beat the same Philadelphia team, 101-99, after a long losing streak for Miami, man. But Miami returns home where we faded them all season long, man. This is the spot where we've profited most this season, fading Miami on their home floor 8 19 and 2 against the spread on their home floor are the Miami Heat. League worst. That's 30th in the NBA. Straight up at home, they're better, man. They're actually 
pretty good, 19 and 10 straight up. So they win at home. They just fail to cover. Um, as a home dog here, they're not going to win, and they're not going to cover. They're probably going to get beat pretty handedly. I'm taking the Sixers, laying the two. Not even going to overcomplicate it. Revenge game Sixers. The better team goes into Miami after just losing to this team two days ago and probably hammers them, man. I'm taking the Sixers here. Not overcomplicating this one. Uh... I know the Sixers have lost back-to-back -back games, but this should be a bounce-back game and a get-right opportunity for the better team, in my opinion. Continuing to fade Miami on their home floor. That has been our favorite spot all season, man. Just about every time we see them there, we want to fade them, man. And uh, I think today is another good spot to do so. They did win that last one, but before that, they were on a pretty bad losing streak. They had lost like four or five straight. And um, just because they got that win, I don't think that uh, they're just finna automatically clicking in the gear. I still think the Sixers are the, by far, much better team right now. And uh, I think they get right on the road, man. Working with Quick Revenge, uh, I'm taking the Sixers here. I'm laying the two. I'm not even going to overcomplicate this one. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Battle of New York, man. We got the Nets out on the road facing the red-hot New York Knicks, man. Knicks are now laying seven and a half at home, man. Total 222. And I'm grabbing the points with the Nets. The Knicks win this basketball game, but laying seven and a half with them, no, sir. I cannot do it. Especially against a Nets team. I know this is a completely different team, but the Nets low-key own the Knicks, bro. It just is what it is. Uh, the Knicks did win the last meeting, though, 124-106. The Nets won the, the previous two pretty handedly. I know those were with Kyrie and KD, but... It's still, you know, it's something there. I honestly believe there's something there. And uh, I know the Knicks are red hot, man. They're on the long winning streak. I do think they win the game and keep their streak alive. But I think the Nets can keep this one competitive, man. I, the Nets are on a back-to-back. -back. They let me down yesterday. We're looking really, really, really good in that first half against Milwaukee. Second half, Milwaukee was Milwaukee. Came back one and covered in that spot. Uh, you know, man, that's the Bucks, bro. That's on me. But... I'm going back to the well, man. I know they've lost four or five. The Nets have. Um, you know, they've they've been beaten handedly in two of their last five. New York beat them 124-106 uh, the last meeting. And uh, Chicago beat them pretty handily out on the road as well, 131-187. But, man, I just got a feeling that the Nets do keep this one competitive. Um, so I'm going to grab the points with the Nets. I know they've been letting us down here recently. I know the Knicks are red hot. But in a rivalry game like this, I'm not willing to lay seven and a half with the Knicks. I'm just not. Uh, the Knicks, again, at home, they've been better. I will give them complete credit for that. They've been way better at home than they were earlier this season. But I'm still not ready just to lay seven and a half with them, man. I think we're looking at a four to five point win for the Knicks if the Nets don't win it outright, man. So me, me personally, I'm not even going to overcomplicate it, man. I'm just going to grab the points here with Brooklyn. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Memphis Grizzlies out on the road facing the Houston Rockets. Memphis laying 10, total 231 and a half. Uh, we got the Grizzlies on a back-to-back, -back, man. After cashing out on the Grizzlies last night, man, I appreciate them boys showing up in that second half, putting it to the Lakers, man. I told y'all that's exactly what was going to happen. And then exactly what I said was going to happen. They were going to get on the media after and uh, get the hooping and hollering and uh, laughing at those guys. And that's exactly what they did. Came directly from the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, Twitter account. Go look at it. So, you know, I kind of felt like that was exactly what was going to happen, and that's exactly what happened. Now, we got the Grizzlies on a back-to-back -back on the road, man, and I know we cashed out with them yesterday as the play of the month, and the very next day, we're going to fade them and take the Rockets plus 10. I know the Rockets, man, have been absolutely garbage, absolutely terrible. I get it. I get it. I know. But in that same breath, man, so is Memphis out on the road. 9-19-1 against the spread out on the road are the Memphis Grizzlies, man. And uh, we did see the Rockets keep the last one competitive, man. They uh, lost that game 129-122. I know they've been hammered by 15-plus in five straight games. I get it, man. But they cover here today, man. They cover today. Give me the Rockets plus the 10 I just got a gut feeling, man. We just don't trust the Grizzlies on the road. We just haven't done it all season. Memphis at home goes stupid, dummy, crazy. Every time we give them an opportunity on the road, man, they just don't hoop. This is the spot I think the Rockets get the cover, man. I know they're on a back-to-back -back as well after getting beat pretty handedly by the uh, Denver Nuggets, 133-112. Tonight, 
that 15-point losing streak comes to an end. They lose this game by 7 or 8. Let's go, Rockets. Let's get it done. I'm leaning Rockets plus the 10, fading the Grizzlies on the road. Day after we cashed out on them, man. We cashed out crazy on the Grizzlies yesterday, but we're going to fade them today. Can't trust them on the road. At home, Grizzlies go stupid, dummy, crazy on the road. They're the third worst road cover team in the NBA. Uh, actually, second worst road cover team in the NBA. Uh, the only team that's worse than Memphis out on the road is Golden State. Golden State's 8-21 eight and 21 against the spread out on the road. Memphis is 9-19-1 and one against the spread out on the road. Even Houston is better at 10-22 and 22 against the spread out on the road. Man, fade Memphis in this spot. Houston, can you show up for a game, please? Please. Taking Houston plus the 10 here in this one. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Orlando Magic out on the road facing the hottest team in basketball, man, the Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee laying 8.5, total 225. I know Orlando's a really good cover team, man, and they've also been streak busters a few times this season, but same thing I said against about uh, Boston earlier. Do we really want to fade Milwaukee on their home floor, especially off of what are they on, a 14-game winning streak? I know they're on a back-to-back. Um, they hammered Brooklyn yesterday, 118-104. I had Brooklyn plus the points in that one yesterday. And in the first half, it was looking really good. Brooklyn was leading the game. Uh, and then in typical Milwaukee fashion, they cut it on in the second half, won the game, and covered as well, man. So, And that was on the road. Do we feel like fading Milwaukee? No, we don't, man. We do like betting the Magic, man, but we can't in this spot. Lean. Milwaukee Bucks laying the points. We've seen Milwaukee win three of their last five by over 10 points. Um, this should be a spot where they hammer Orlando as well. Uh, I know we've seen Orlando go into New Orleans and get a win in their last one. Uh, but other than that, right before then, they were really struggling, man. And for me, me personally, I'm not trying to catch a falling knife in this one. Uh, betting against Milwaukee. My guy Wayne asked me that yesterday. And I said, yeah, I do sometimes, but this, for, to me, this is not the spot. I tried to do it yesterday with the Brooklyn Nets. It was looking good. Milwaukee is just in that mode right now. I'm done fading them on this little winning streak. If anything, the lean is Milwaukee lane eight and a half, or stay away completely from me here in this one. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Los Angeles Lakers. They're out on the road facing the Oklahoma City Thunder Buddies, the cover buddies. The best cover team in the NBA, man. Oklahoma City laying one in this one. Total 229 and a half. I'm going to be honest, man. I'm taking the Lakers on the money line here in this one. I'm, I, the reason I've been fading the Thunder Buddies is they don't have Shy Gillies Alexander. I don't even understand this line without Shy, bro. Like, the Thunder is not good without him. He is a top five scorer in the NBA. He is the whole engine for this team. And without him, I can't trust the Thunder. It's just really that simple. I watched the entire Lakers-Memphis game last night. The Lakers had me a little nervous in that first half. I ain't going to lie. Austin Reeves was out there hooping, uh, hitting threes and carrying on. Anthony Davis was a block machine in that first half. Um, John Morant just got busy in that third quarter. But Oklahoma City don't got no guy that can get busy like Ja did in that third quarter, man. And I think the Lakers actually pulled this game out, to be honest. Uh, the Lakers working with revenge as the Thunder Buddies did beat them on the LeBron passing Kareem game, if y'all remember that, man. So... No LeBron tonight. Uh, D'Angelo Russell still day to day, and it looks like there's really no update on Shy, but I think he's out. I, I think he's still out, to be honest. And hard to trust the Thunder Buddies without him, man. They got beaten back to back games without him. Uh, lost by six last night to the Kings, one twenty three, one seventeen, and uh, the game before that they lost to the Kings as well on their home floor, one twenty four, one fifteen. Our Thunder Buddies have now lost four straight, man, and uh, you know. I think they're I think they're tanking the season, to be honest, bro. I think it's what it is. For a while there, I thought they were gonna make a push for that play in, but I think they're gonna uh, kinda rein it in. The Lakers are a team that's still for sure trying to make the play in. I think they go into Oklahoma City and pull this one out. Uh give me the Lakers on the money line. It hurts to continue to fade our favorite money making team in the Oklahoma City Thunder Buddies, man, but Without Shai Gilles Alexander, a top five scorer in the NBA, somebody who's averaging thirty one points. Um, it's hard to want to bet the Thunder without him, man. So, Lakers on the money line for me here in this one. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the New Orleans Pelicans out on the road facing the Portland Trail Blazers. Portland laying one and a half, total 232. Portland on a back-to-back, -back, man, after getting hammered pretty good last night by the Golden State Warriors, 123-105. Golden State continues to be dominant on their home floor. Uh, Golden State continues to go stupid dummy crazy there as well, man. 
Portland, so now they're on a back-to-back, man. Uh, last time we seen Portland on their home floor, they hammered Houston 131-114, the Damian Lillard 71-point basketball game. Now they got the Pelicans coming in, man, a team that's really struggling, a team that's lost four straight. Uh, you know, what do we do here? This line's at one and a half. To be honest, this is how I feel about this one. The Pelicans are a better team. Overall, the Blazers have the better player in Damian Lillard. If the Blazers are going to win this one, we need another nuclear game from Damian Lillard. Do I see that happening tonight? It could, but do I see it happening tonight? No, I think the Pelicans get off the snide, get themselves a road win. I'm going to lean on the Pelicans on the money line here in this one. I know they've lost four straight, and I know the Blazers won the first meeting in New in New Orleans the first time, 106-95 on the 10th of November. But like I said a minute ago, I think the Pelicans overall are a better team than this uh, Portland Trail Blazers team. Only two games under 500. These these two teams are in similar spots. They both really, really need this game. I just think the Pelicans are better constructed. I think the Pelicans lock in here tonight and go in here and get themselves a win. Um, that's just how I see it. So in our last and final matchup of the night, man, I actually do lean Pelicans going into Portland and pulling this one out. It's going to be a good game, uh, but I think the Pelicans finally get off the snide and end their four-game losing streak. I'm going to take them on the money. And that's going to conclude today's episode on the Jam Session on March 1st, 2023, man. New month, new goals, new opportunities, man. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all know what to do for you guys, man. Smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, and drop your like down in the comments, man. My best bets can be found at Pick Dogs Premium. Just click that link in the description. It takes you right to my handicapper page. That's where you can find my long-term packages, three-day, seven-day, 30-day, monthly, seasonal, yearly. Uh, you can find all my bets for today's action, and you can find my $15 NBA Jam Session play there as well, man. Well, we hit the play of the month yesterday with the Memphis Grizzlies. Love to see that. We hit the play of the month in November, December, January, and now February. We're now in March. We'll see when that play comes up, but we're going to try to smash that one as well. We've hit three of our last four on that $15 NBA Jam Session play, man. So scoop that up as we go for four or five today. I absolutely love tonight's play, man. So scoop that up over there. Follow me on Twitter and check out my live show, man, as they both uh, update y'all on late injury news and let y'all know if my mind changes due to late information. Coming out of the association, man, my live show should be live today, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. I will have a guest today as we run through the card one more time. Nine games. We're going to try to smash it per usual. Start the month off on a high note. It's March Madness. Uh, this is the month that can change your entire life, man. Let's try to do just that. It's been your guy, Jay Briggs. I'll talk to y'all on Twitter. Talk to y'all in the comments, man, and I'll see y'all later on in the day. I'm out. Peace.